Hello and welcome. My name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. And in today's video, we're talking all about budgeting in QuickBooks Online. It kind of feels like it's been a while since I've done a QuickBooks video, so I am absolutely happy to walk you through how to create a budget in QuickBooks Online. This is a really neat budgeting tool that is available to most versions of QuickBooks Online. There might be like some features that are a little bit different from the others, but just know that I am using the test drive version as I always do in my videos. So you might see some changes from the version I'm using to the version that you use. I did, however, check a couple of my clients that have this feature, and so mostly it looks similar. I think this is a really neat feature, so you can try it out and see how you like it for budgeting as well as forecasting, because I think the capability of creating multiple budgets across the same year is amazing, and I think this is going to be such a really helpful tool for you in terms of management of your financial statements as you know, whoever you are in your business, if you are the owner or if you are even just a bookkeeper. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Also, make sure you are subscribed to my newsletter so you are aware of anything new happening and let's get into it. All right, this is the QuickBooks test drive version. I just wanted to remind you. And from the login screen, this is what you see here. There are two ways that you can get to the budgeting feature from here. So on the left-hand side, there's a nifty little budgets button that you can click and it'll get you to the budgeting feature. You can also click the gear icon on the top right under tools. It says budgeting right here. So take your button that you wanna push and then you can get to the budgeting feature. It takes you to the exact same place. So with this one, it says, this is kind of like the thing that you'll see when it's the first time that you are working on a budget. There are a few different ways that you can enter a budget. So there's this button for quickly creating a budget. And then there's also this button that says import budget. I just wanted to show you what this looks like. It walks you through what you want to create. So obviously it's going to be a profit and loss statement. And then this is the time period. So this is based on a calendar year business. Now you can select what kind of format you want. So I'll get into like the subdivided version, but for now we're just going to say that it's a consolidated version. And actually you can pre-fill the data from here by using a previous year's data. So if you wanted to like actuals 2023, it'll pull into the budgeting feature, all of the actuals from 2023. And that would be your baseline to start creating your budget. So you can go in, click on the actuals and it'll populate. And then you would edit the budget from there. For now, we'll go ahead and click on next. And this is the coolest thing. I haven't seen this. So I thought this was so neat. So you can actually download a PL budget template from here and you can fill it in according to what you want your budget to look like. And then you would just upload it here. So this is what the PL budget template looks like. I'm going to show you the Excel version. And it's just a really basic spreadsheet. It includes all of your general ledger accounts that are profit and loss related. So this isn't going to include any of your bank accounts because those go on the balance sheet. And so from here, you would just fill in what you would think you would need. So like, let's say 5,000, and then it automatically populates some of the features here. So you would just actually this first tab shows you what you need to do. It tells you what you need to do. And so you would just follow that. We kind of do budgeting with my clients a little bit differently since I manage their financial statements a little bit differently. But I thought this was a really neat feature in case you needed it. So after you upload it, then you would go ahead and click next. Obviously, I'm not uploading anything. And then it would take you to the budgeting features. I just wanted to kind of walk you through that very quickly. This is a really easy way if you already have data in from 2023, I would actually just go straight to here and click on actuals and let that be my baseline and then just edit the budget from there. So yes, I wanna cancel this import. Let me 
close that. <clears throat> so now we are taking taken back to this original screen. So that was the import budget button. Now let's go ahead and just click on the quick create a budget button. <laughs> and again, it's going to kind of walk you through it. How do you want to set up your budget? So profit and loss consolidated. And then if you want to pre-fill data, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll say 2023. Obviously, you can import a budget or create a custom budget. We'll come back and look at the subdivided version next. Okay, so this is comparing reference data, which means that it's showing you the actuals from 2023 in this column. But this is like probably one of the neatest tools that I've ever seen from QuickBooks Online. I think this is way more functional than any of their other cash flow templates that they use on Google Sheets. Like this would work a lot better as kind of like a forecasting tool, but that is just my commentary. <laughs> so there's a few different ways that you can look at this, right? So this is the PL, obviously, and it's going to show you actuals. This column is going to show you the totals for each of the months. And then each of the months are displayed here, January through December. It's not going to pull in any historical data, even though I think there is some in the test drive version. So we'll just, we'll make something up as we go, but there's a few different ways you can look at it. So this is the monthly perspective. There's the quarterly perspective, and then there's the yearly perspective. So this is just bottom line totals for the entire year. What do you want that to look like? I absolutely love the monthly perspective. I think this is the way you should budget. I think this is the way you should run your reports. You should always be looking at your financial statements on a monthly basis. And I would even go so far as to say compared to the previous year. So January 2024 compared to January 2023. Each business has a different season. And for some products like if you're selling a lot of products that are created specifically for gifts, you might be really busy towards the end of every calendar year. And, you know, for a nonprofit who takes in a lot of donations at the end of each calendar year, like that's going to be your busy season. But that's not true for every other business. Every other business might be busy in spring or in the summer, depending on what type of business you are. So for me, I'm definitely busy in the beginning part of every year. I would say between January and March is probably the busiest time for me. And I think you guys can all um, understand exactly why that is, <laughs> what happens in April. Um, so yeah, every business has a different season and that's why I like to encourage you to run your reports on a monthly basis and compare that to the prior year. So sorry for that was kind of a long winded way, but I wanted to make sure that was really clear. Okay. So the way that you would create your budget from here, there's a couple of different ways that you can enter the data. So for example, let's say you have design income every year that totals about 20,000. You can simply write in 20,000 here and then click this really nifty button here. It's going to divide that 20,000 by 12 and show you what the monthly amounts are. This is probably the easiest way of creating your budget, especially if you don't have historical data. So then this way you can come down here and see the budget total for the whole year is 30,000 and for the monthly it's 2,500. Now, what I was talking about before in terms of seasonality, you can actually go in to each of these months and type in what you want it to be. So let's say you are really busy at the beginning of every year and then it kind of tapers off, right? So you can just go ahead and type in and then go for the rest of the year. You can do it that way. You can also come in here and edit it that way. And then it just automatically adds everything up in the budget totals column. And then that flows through all the way to the bottom where your net income is. Obviously, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but I wanted to show you kind of the functionality behind this budgeting feature in QuickBooks Online. So if you wanted to save it a different name, you can always come up here and rename it. However, you can say, you know, forecast. And for example, you can create this at the beginning of every year thinking, 
okay, this is how I think the rest of 2024 is going to go. And if you have major shifts, then you can come back, you can duplicate this and edit it from here. So let's say, you know, it's already July right now when I'm recording this video. And then let's say you think you're going to be doing better in August. So you can come here after you duplicate this and then you can edit the rest of these amounts, and then you can call it, you know, forecast August or whatever you want to call it. So it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and click on save um, here. It doesn't really matter, like, you know, if you wanted to create one budget or two budgets or three budgets, you can do it however you want to. And I think that is just so cool. So once you get out of there, after you save it, oh, apparently my name is Craig now. <laughs> then it'll come here to this screen and you can actually run a budget versus actuals report. So let's see what that looks like because obviously we only put in a budget for income. So if they have any data in here, yeah, there is. So there's all this data, right? What it'll do here on this side, if I can scroll up, what is happening? I think it froze. There we go. Okay, so, you know, if you can scroll up on the side, then you can see that it is comparing your total actuals year to date, basically, to your budget, and then it gives you kind of like the variance. So this is such a helpful report that you can look at on a monthly basis to make sure that you're staying within budget if you really need to be on a very tight budget. It's also really good in terms of financial performance because, you know, if something drastically changes in your business, this is one way that you can kind of look at it and make better financial decisions for the future. So that's kind of like the, this is the budget versus actuals. And you can kind of customize this as well if you wanted to. Uh, I don't seem to have a lot of options in this one, but I think if you have other versions of QuickBooks, you can do a little bit of customization here. You can kind of like remove some columns or whatever makes sense for you. So let's go back to the budgeting feature. And I wanted to show you what the subdivided is for. So if you clicked on the subdivided version for creating your budget, there's a couple of different ways that you can use this feature. Usually you can do a subdivided budget if you are using class or location. And so this isn't really gonna be very helpful for us right now, but it would be kind of similar in the sense that like we can go back to this one and I can show you. So you can come back in here and edit this. But you know how I was showing you like this quarterly or this yearly? So you would have more options up here and you can say, I want to do a budget by class. And, you know, you could have the same monthly or whatever. And then you can create one of these for each of the classes that you use in your business. So that's one really neat way to do it. I think that's going to be like really helpful if you're using classes for a really specific purpose. So that's really what that subdivide is. I don't think a lot of people will need that in terms of what the features are for, maybe for larger nonprofits. I think that would be helpful if you have different program areas that you wanted to do reporting off of, like you have a manager for over each of these different departments. I think that would be really helpful, um, like a, a different way to do that. But uh, the consolidated version is going to be working just fine for the majority of us. Even for one of my larger clients, I still use the consolidated version just because it just makes the most sense. It's the most meaningful for my client. And that's just how we run our budgeting. And we look at the budget to actuals report on a monthly basis. So again, this is going to be like really helpful for you guys. I'm really excited about this version of um, QuickBooks that you have the capability, that you have the access to create a budget and they make it so easy and so streamlined. Um, but again, I just think this is a really neat feature and that is all I have for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Let me know what you liked about this, what you didn't like about this feature in QuickBooks, and I will see you guys in my next video.